Are you guys ready to talk about Clue 2 for Rami Hill's Mystery Shawl Knit Along for 2023? I know I am. Come on, let's go. Hi everyone, welcome to the Knitting Turnpike. My name is Gina Pike. I'm so happy you're here with me today. As I said, we're going to be talking about Rami Hill's mystery shawl knit along for 2023 called Falderall, uh, which means whimsical and fun. We are on clue two. This will be a spoiler video, so if you do not want, if you are knitting this and you don't like to see uh, what it looks like before you uh, knit it, save this video to watch it later okay uh, because I'm going to be showing you my shawls and talking a little bit about what happened for clue two of this mystery shawl knit along now um, as I mentioned before I'll just give you like a little bit of a brief overview and then we'll just get into it so if you don't know what the Rami Hill mystery shawl knit along is this happens every year she does a shawl design um, this year and every year you need two colors of fingering weight yarn at least 400 yards um, they need to be contrasting they can be minimal contrast but they still need to contrast because there's some interplay between the two colors as you will see here in clue two and um, so uh, you do want them to to go well together and uh, I am using I'm, I am actually knitting two uh, my colors for a uh, color shawl a I have a gray and a blue a dark kind of a blue green yarn that I'm using um, my color one is the gray one it is from house of all the mode fingering that's called gaga the uh, blue green is from Madeline Tosh Tosh Maria light plus tweed and Casto. now for my shawl two I'm us using some yarn from Miss Babs I'm using their Avon yarn base which is a little bit lighter weight it is 490 yards per 100 grams it is um, merino wool plus I think it's 85% merino wool plus 15% bombex silk so it is a little bit softer a little bit not a lot it is a little bit lighter feel than the other yarn but I love both of these shawls so much I'm already really in love with both of them and having so much fun knitting them up I can't wait to share them with you so for clue two um, also, I want to mention before we get into this, I do, ha I have created a playlist for the Rami Hill Mystery Shawl Knit Along for 2023. In the playlist, I am attaching the tutorials from Rami Hill that go along with this Mystery Shawl Knit Along, her YouTube lives that go along with this. I'm not sure if you can see those though, if you are not a pattern buyer, maybe you can. I don't know how that works. I don't know how YouTube works on that, but I am linking those into my playlist because she gives a lot of really great tips. She does an hour long um, talk through about it um, as the play, as it's released. So um, the day that the clue is released, as I should say. And it's very, very, very helpful. And the link is in the pattern. Uh, but um, so that happens on the day that the clue comes out and it kind of walks you through some of the trickier parts of the pattern. Um, there are some other stitches that I have in the playlist that are, t are tutorials I have done in the past. A lot of them are short tutorials. If you just need a quick reference point, they are in that playlist. Uh, some of the stitches you need for this uh, clue to or knit, knit through the back loop, purl, purl through the back loop, knit front and back, which she likes to do knit back and front. So my video shows both ways. Um, yarn over, slip stitch, working yarn in front, slip stitch, working yarn in back. Knit one yarn over twice and knit one knit yarn over knit yarn over knit and then a knit yarn over knit. I've done all of those for shawls and a slip knit two past a slip stitch over a knit two together a slip slip knit. I have a video that shows that four ways linked and then all of the make one uh, increase videos make one make one right make one left make one purl. Uh, those are all attached and then she has two new stitches which are cabling stitches and I'm going to be showing a, a, a clip about the tutorials now when Rami Hill shows it she likes to pinch it and kind of twist the stitches around and put them back on her left needle and knit through them 
I'm going to show you that, but I'm also going to show you how to do it without pulling those stitches off the left needle. Just go ahead and knitting them. I've shown it before. I've shown it many times before. This is a very simple cable stitch. It is a 1-1 cable stitch, so you're just involving two stitches, uh, bringing either to the front or to the back to create the left or right leaning cable. So we'll talk through that. And you will be using colors one and two. You get both colors. So I don't know if you guys uh, saw the interview that Irina is doing on Fiber Chats. Uh, she is doing Humans of Rami Hill. If you are interested in maybe participating and being interviewed by Irina, email her. I'll link her channel below. Um, but she is looking for people to interview if you are knitting this shawl. Um, and uh, if you want to participate, I got interviewed for Clue 1, and she asked me what I was hope what I was thinking where we might go for Clue 2, and I said, well, I'm hoping Color 2 comes in, and I'm hoping that we get some cables, and that happened. I was, when I saw that, I was doing the Snoopy dance. I was really excited that Color 2 is actually playing and uh, making an appearance much earlier um, in the knit-along than, than it usually does, because like last year, you can see that's last year's shawl. We had color one for a very long time, and then we had color two at the bottom. This year, it ain't like that. It's color one and color two, and we are having some fun with both of them. So that is really, really cool. One of the things I want to share, a special tip, um, and Rami does a great job of sharing all the technical stuff and everything. So I'm just going to share a couple of quick tips that I think will help if you are knitting this. Uh, what are the things if you are new to knitting lace? I know that when I knit lace, and I, I will love to knit lace, and I've knitted a lot of lace, I still use stitch markers. They are a lifesaver, and um, I don't care if the, the repeat is only 10 stitches. Now, if it's like two stitches, I probably won't put stitch markers in, but if it's, on, if it's 10 stitches, I put the stitch markers in because um, it helps you keep track of those 10 stitches. Um, I know there were a couple of times on my second shawl, I forgot yarn overs, but I could take a look at it and I'm like, I've only got nine stitches. I dropped it. I didn't put a yarn over in. So it just helps you identify quickly if something's missing. It also helps keep you on track. So that's my one, one, my first tip. I want to share a quick little clip about, um, something about stitch markers. I hope that you guys will find this interesting. I hope so. The other tip I have for you guys is stitch markers. Definitely, I just said I use stitch markers. And even if it's like 10 stitches per stitch marker, I think they're awesome. They're a great way to keep count, um, keep your keep track, easily identify where you might be missing a stitch, all that. And these are not that expensive, but, you know, sometimes they can be expensive or sometimes you lose them or sometimes you're somewhere and you don't have access to your stitch markers. Let me show you another way you can do something. And it's just pretty easy to do. Um, and it works really great. Um, you can take a straw, like any straw you get from like your, you go to the uh, Wendy's or McDonald's and get a drink. Instead of throwing it in the trash, clean it out real good, dry it, clean it. And you can cut it and make little stitch markers. And all I'm doing is the thing I love about these is that if I lose these all the time off my needles and they go under the couch and I have to sweep them out, inevitably I will miss one and suck it up in my vacuum. And fortunately I haven't damaged my vacuum, but I always worry that I'm going to damage my vacuum. Now if I suck these up, these are plastic, they're less likely to ruin my vacuum cleaner. But let me show you. I want to show you this. This is a US 8 knitting needle. And I want to show you that... Um, if you're worried about it fitting on your needle, you can check it before you cut the straw. Like, see, this is USA. I can easily slide it in there, so um, I know that these stitch markers will work on my USA knitting needle. It's pretty tight. I mean, it's not super tight, but it works, and that's probably as high as I could probably go, but um, that's pretty awesome. Up to USA, you could use these. So what you want to do is... So simple. You just take your, your, your clean straw and lightly cut these, you know, just like this. To whatever width you want. You can make them super thin. If you want them a little bit chunkier, you can do that. Oh, I, I sent that one flying. And you just cut this up. And you can make a ton of these. Like, let me show you. 
and really fast and instead of throwing this in the trash repurpose your straws into really flexible they're really flexible you can pull them under your knitting pretty easy and these are all the stitch markers i made from that one straw it's a pretty good amount so in a pinch it's a good thing to do all right thank you for letting me share that i thought that was a really uh, fun way to to economize i mean i love i have stitch markers and i love my stitch markers um, but if say you go out of town forget your stitch markers go grab a cold drink Cut your straw up and you can have some quick stitch markers uh, right there if you need them. So I thought that was a fun way to do that. So now I'm going to show you my shawls. I have a video clip that shows you both of my shawls. It isn't very long, so you'll get to see both of them pretty quickly. Okay, here we are with Clue 2 for... Uh, Rami Hills Mystery Shawl Knit Along 2023 Fall to Roll. I thought this week we would start with this one since last week we started with the other one. You guys know I'm knitting two and I am so excited. You remember we left off clue one here where we had just picked up these stitches along the edge. Look, clue two starts right here and we have color two and cables. Anyway, this is what you do. We had picked up the stitches all along this edge to finish this, to, to start doing this in a more triangular building on the triangle. Uh, as you can see, we use our color too. I have this color and this color too is a, called Floyd, a hot pink. This is Miss Babs Avon. It is, when, I, when you look at my other shawl, you will see a difference. I feel a difference. This yarn is 490 yards per 100 meters. So almost an extra 100 yards in the, I'm sorry, 490 yards per 100 grams. And it is, um, I can tell it's a difference when I'm knitting with it. It is lighter, it's got silk in it, so it, it is it's softer and it's knitting up lighter. But this is, um, what you got here, we're doing some uh, one stitch cabling, doing left, left leaning, right leaning cables, knitting it out. This beautiful design that goes along the edge here that you can see what we do around the center stitch and just do that for a period. Then we drop color two and we bring in some beautiful lace knitting, just lace knitting with color one. I thought about adding some beads like right in here, but I didn't. I left it beadless, but that would be really pretty to add some beads or maybe right in here, right in here at the top of this little point would be really pretty. As you can see, that's what we what that's what we've done. This is going to be a really short one. It wasn't a very long clue, really, and um, just very simple, very relaxed. This is what the whole shawl is looking like now for clue, from clue to beautiful. Now let's look at my other one. My other one's darker. I'm using a sock yarn and um, the. Um, Darkest color is a single ply yarn from Madeline Tosh. I think it's, yeah, it's a single ply yarn from Madeline Tosh. You can see that right there. So those are my colors. Um, and this is, a, this this gray yarn is a sock yarn. It's 80% nylon, 20%, 80% merino, 20% nylon is plied. It is thicker, it's about 400 yards per 100 grams. So it feels thicker. Um, it is thicker, as you can see. That was part one where we did the triangle. We picked up the stitches here. And then this is, of course, my color two coming in, knitting it. You can see the speckles. I think the more you knit it, the speckles become less deterrent of the lace. I don't know, maybe that's my wishful thinking. I still like it, even though it is pretty speckled. I still like it, and I love this. I love the interplay of these colors right in here with the color two coming in and then the color one. I just love that. I love the, these two colors together. I thought they turned out really nice. And then of course, here's my lace. And as you can see, this yarn is pretty speckled. There is a difference. But I think the stitch definition's really great on this, this sock yarn. You can see this, the stitches right here really nicely. Um, so I think it looks really good. That's, let me go around so you guys can see it. I'll go slowly, I've been just zoomed in close to all pointy but that's clue two with this shawl pretty 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 and that's what it looks like from a distance 
and really enjoyed knitting it and was sad when the second one was over. Finished it like Sunday about noon, so it doesn't take very long to knit clue two. Now, that was doing two, so you can breeze through it or you can take your time, whatever you wanna do, but thank you for letting me share this, and I hope if, wherever you are on knitting clue two, you are enjoying it as much as I did. Now, isn't that looking great? I'm so excited about this. Uh, it, this this clue two is just so much fun. I mean, I I wanted to start a third one. I really did, but I was like, you know what? I am also knitting her Lace Lovers Club, and I'm behind. I'm like three shawls behind, so I'm going to try to work on that, and I'm hoping that maybe by next week, I'll have that finished. I am working on it, and I'm like getting really close to being finished. I'll kind of give you guys like a little peek. This is the shawl number two, and it has beads on it. Anyway, I'm getting close, and I'm hoping that maybe by next week I can do more of a vlog video for the Clue 3 update instead of just a short Clue update, um, maybe with this. And then I also have some, some new yarn, a, a whole vlog thing that I want to share. And there's also some upcoming things that I really want to share with you guys in the knitting community. I think that you guys will enjoy. So um, maybe next week I can do a vlog. Um, but the, the last thing I want to share with you is I just want to show you quickly a short little tip about if you don't want to pinch and, and rearrange your stitches uh, for your cabling needle, you can knit them while they're still on the left hand needle. You don't have to take them off. So I'm going to show you that and let you guys see pinched or leave it on the needle. See which one you like best. Let me know down in the comments below after you watch this video clip which one you might like best. Okay, I'm going to show you a quick tip for the Romy Hill Mr. Shonda Long Clue 2. Oh, since we're doing one stitch cabling, working with uh, making cables uh, with two stitches, one stitch, on the cable needle one on your knitting needle I'm gonna show you a shortcut she showed you a way to pinch it I'll show you what she showed us in her YouTube live okay so for and I'm gonna show you a mnemonic so let's do the left leaning cable first when you're doing something to the left so you can see the picture here the symbol it actually leans to the left and so that's a hint and there's also L in the title of or in the name of the cable, it's 1-1-L-C-L one, one, L, L means left. A way that you can remember this to take your, to, how to take your stitches is think about this. Uh, I left the front door open. I left, left is I left the front door open. So, left, front, the first stitch you have on your um, will be taken to the front. I left the front door open. That will make it lean to the left. So you bring it to the front. Bring this to the back. This is what she did. She pinched it, put it back, put it back onto her left hand needle and knit it. And I'm showing you this not to be redundant. Um, I'm going to show you a the way I like to do it. And I know she said she likes to do it. Sorry, I'm splitting my yarn here. She likes to do it this way. I, I don't think there, it looks any different. So I'm just doing this just to, so we can see. We, I'm gonna see what you think. Let me get a couple of stitches over. So the way I like to do it is I don't like to bring it off my knitting needles. I like to, for the left leaning one, you're going to go through the back. You're going to go around to the second stitch. It's got to come to the front, so you got to go through the back of the stitch. Knit through the back of the stitch like that. Do not bring anything off your knitting needle. You still have, you've knitted through the second, the back of the second stitch. That's what it looks like. Then you're going to come around to the first stitch and knit through the front of that. And then you pull it all off and you can see it makes a left leaning cable. For me, it does it does lay a little bit flatter than when I pinched it and moved it. You can see this is the one where I pinched it and and twisted it. This is the one where I just did it without taking it off the the needles. So it's up to you. It's just a, another way to do it. But again, left the front door open so you bring that front stitch, that first stitch to the front to make it lean to the left. Then knit 
then knit them both. And that works for any type of cable. You might be knitting through the back loop or purling or whatever, but you can see what it looks like. It's pinching. That's me knitting it off the needle, leaving it on the needle and knitting it. All right. So now let's do the right one. 11RC one, one R leans to the right. You can see the symbol. It leans to the right. The, other, the mnemonic to help you remember that is I'll be right back, right back. So the first stitch is going to be taken to the back to make it lean to the right. I'm trying to pinch this here. I don't do a good job with the pinching. And she showed a crafty little way to leave it on your needles and kind of slide them around a little bit. But I still, I don't know. I just kind of like to leave it on there. The needles without pulling it off but okay so you got the right the first stitch to the back you knit it and there you go you got your right forward leaning cable and that's with pinching now if you don't want to pinch it and take a risk of dropping your stitch you can do this you can go into the second stitch knit it And go into the first stitch and knit it and then you'll have a right leaning cable and that's what it looks like I think I might have split the yarn there a little bit let me show you that again you go into the second stitch and knit it see if I can do this without splitting this yarn and then you go into the first stitch and knit it pull it off you have a right leaning cable so that's two ways you could do it. And don't forget, I'll be right back. I left the front door open. And that way you don't have to look at your um, definition or your, uh, your short notes. Um, that can help you remember how you're supposed to take the first stitch to do these. I thought I'd give you a different way to do it. All right, thank you so much for watching that. I hope you enjoyed that quick little tip. You have seen that here before. That is nothing new. Uh, so I apologize if you have... Uh, if you are a returning subscriber, you've seen all these tips before, I'm sure, and heard me say I use stitch markers. But I can't stress that enough that if you are knitting lace, stitch markers are your best friend because they will keep you on track. And so are charts. Charts are really good. That's the other thing about the Rami Hill Mrs. Shaw Knit Along. If you are a chart knitter or a, a text knitter, uh, she has charts and text. Uh, so you can do both. I mean, or you can teach yourself to, to read charts better because you've got the text there to fall back on. So it's a great tool. To, this is a, also a, a learning tool. I learn a time to learn and challenge yourself. Try to look at the chart more. See if you can get it. Like, look at the chart. See what you would do. Look at the text to see if it matches up. And uh, help yourself learn how to read charts. And her patterns are a great way to do that because she puts both. She even puts a what you see is what you knit type of a chart which means you don't have to, um, like sometimes charts are like what you see is what you get. She also has that in here, which like for, sorry, my coffee pot's going off. For wrong side rows, you might have to flip the stitch for a symbol, like if it's a, a block, a blank box, where it is, that's a knit stitch on the right side, it'll be a purl stitch on the wrong side because you're because what you see is what you get is the view of the shawl from the right side only so you might have some reverse type of, of stitches on the wrong side so you have that kind of chart so it's really dependent on what you're used to if you want to knit like that or if you want to see what you what you see is what you knit so if it's if it says knit in the box you knit if it's, it says purl you purl you don't have to think about it you know she has the wrong side all written out and you don't have to think about those extra stitches and man maneuvers you might have to do on the wrong side which is right now, I know there are six people in this group knitting uh, this shawl currently. If you are knitting this shawl and want to let me know what... Actually, there's seven. There's seven people in this group that are knitting this shawl right now. And I know of an eighth person who is thinking about it. Come on, Patty. I know you want to cast on. Um, so uh, I'm so excited about eight people in this group. Uh, 
uh, knitting the shawl. If you want to, if you are knitting it and you want to share your projects with this group, email me, let me know and, or send me some of your pictures and I'll be glad to share them as part of this, this video that I do, this video update. Uh, but I'm so excited that the people that are knitting this along with me, I see your projects in Ravelry and, um, you guys are all doing great. I'm so excited that there's a group of you guys in this group knitting it along with me. And I um, hope you guys are all having fun. And thank you guys so much for letting me share uh, these uh, shawls and this project with you. It is one of my, it's my favorite of the, of the year. It happens every year. I look forward to it. I've knitted it since 2016. Um, I just enjoy it so very much. So thank you for letting me share it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. And I really do appreciate you spending some time with me today. And um Please take care of yourselves and I will see you probably really, really soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.